the council seeks permission to approach the bench as it is. The council seeks permission to address the bench as it is. May it please the commission and council one on the behalf of Big Show and others in the instant case of Big Show and others versus Playflix and others. In the area, the instant case concerns about firstly, legality of acquisition of sectors by Playflix. Secondly, it concerns about the dominant abuse of dominant position by Playflix, which the council one will be dealing for the initial 22 minutes. Further, the third concern of anti competitive effect due to agreement between Playflix and Diwood, Playflix and Cartel will be dealt by my, by my co counsel for the further 21 minutes. The Lordship, we have reserved our two minutes for our purpose. If the Lordship is well versed with the facts of the case, the no, council. This is a legal issue. Yeah. <laughs> Trade away, please. Much obliged. The Lordship, the first issue before this honorable commission is that the acquisition of SecPass is not valid. And the council submits the same in two forms. Firstly, that the service of SecPass and Playflix are complementary to each other, leading to breach of statutory uh, requirements under Schedule 3 of the Regulation of 2011. Secondly, this combination has subsequently lead to appreciable adverse effect breaching Schedule 4 of the CC Regulation 2011. If you are not sure, may refer to paragraph number 23 of the case study. Here, it, this notice of acquisition is submitted under Rule 5A of the CC Regulation 2011, which leads to automatic approval of the combination under Green Channel Rule. However, logic, there are some requirements uh, under Schedule 3 of the CC Regulation, wherein this combination should not be having vertical, horizontal, or complementary overlap. On the contrary, we are alleging that there is complementary overlap with respect to the nature of services of SecPass and Playflix are considered. The logic is pertinent to understand that SecPass is providing a specialized software which links the geolocation of the user ID of the user with that of uh, with that of the login page of the Playflix. The logic, if we think pragmatically, when a user's reach the login page of Playflix. Therein, while logging into it, it is automatically agreeing to the services of SecPass, which are the security, uh, password security services here. Lord. Here, Lord, sir, it is pertinent to understand that these two services on the login page are so integrated that they cannot exercise independent of each other. If we go by the definition of, com uh, of the complementary services, under form one of the regulation, the loan says that complementary services are those which are used together and enhance the value of the combined services. The Lordship, as stated, these two services are used together. Secondly, as far as the enhancement of services concerned, the production houses in the country of IZAR are preferring Playflix to, uh, Playflix to stream their uh, content taking into consideration that it is a more secure platform as compared to the, any other streaming platform in the country of ISA. Establishing the same, moving forward. The services may be uh, with reference to the uh, type of quality of the quality of the picture, quality of the, uh, uh, the audio, only with reference to screening of the uh, thing or the services could be with reference to the quality of the audio and quality, I'm sorry, quality of the Video. Indeed, yeah. ID, ID, HD. We have 620, 780, uh, like that. Indeed, taking that into consideration, the another platform in our market, that is Big Show, it provides the quality content of 4G resolution, wherein this uh, dominant player of Playflix provides only 1080 uh, quality content. Your Lordship, if you may refer, kindly refer to paragraph number 25 of the case study. The production house that is Diagon has itself stated that we are preferring Playflix pertaining to the security services. Pro it provides. very simple. If you are going to have services, whether we have to look from the consumer point of view or intermediate consumer, very simple. Enhancing the services, it results in the enhancing services. You, you have made a submission before us. This enhances the services, therefore, it is complementary. 
My question is very simple. Whether the services with reference to end user or services with reference to intermediately consumer. That's it. Nilachit, from the perspective of consumer, as big show, that is the interest we are representing here, it provides 4K resolution. Whereas, Playfix provide only 1080 resolution if we refer to paragraph number 9 of the case study, which means that our client is having much more better quality, but still, Diamond is preferring, that is the production house, is preferring the lower quality, uh, quality streaming platform. That is intermediary consumer. That's a point. Indeed, your logic comes in. That's a point. Just one additional question to this. Now, you say it's a very, when you go to a landing page, you will see that, you know, these pass, password sharing sort of apps are linked. Right? Indeed. And therefore, it becomes an essential input. Right? Suppose we were hearing you, I mean, giving an example. Suppose we were hearing you under the tree and not in this conference room, in this auditorium. Would this become an essential input? Do you think that? For a moot court, this is an essential instance. Yeah, presence of uh, uh, commission and presence of the uh, council representing the interest of a party is the main essence of uh, of a moot court competition. It, exactly in our case, because the security, uh, password security concern is rampant in our situation, therefore password security become the essence to make the assurance, uh, to make the existence of the player in the market to be assured. Moving forward, your logic under Schedule Four of the regulation, if you may refer, of the Schedule Four of the regulation of 2011, it states that the declaration should be made while uh, doing combination, that the combination is not causing appreciable adverse effect. Uh, relying on the Section 20, subsection Four, there in your logic. The factors for appreciable adverse effect are laid. We are alleging that Playflix is causing, extending the barriers to enter into the market of online audio video stream. That is clause B. Yalachip, Playflix has made an agreement with SecPass not to share this password security system with anyone else, which in the market of online video streaming is one of the most essential and uh, most of the most essential service to survive in the market, considering the password sharing problem you got. Secondly, as far as the clause E is considered, that is the, that combination should not result in the huge profit gain to an enterprise. Your logic, Playflix has made security service as a center of attraction for the production houses and for the content creators, thereby, this combination has resulted into huge com uh, huge profit gains to play. And for the same, I would request you to refer for paragraph number 26 of the cases. You are know, establishing the same that there is complementary overlap to this combination. It is causing appreciable adverse effect. Now I request your know, logic to refer paragraph page number seven and eight of the combination of the of our compendium. We have submitted. The report of Competition Law Review Committee, wherein it was stated by this commission that if a combination wrongly avails green channel for transaction, not eligible under this rule, then it may also be rendered to be a void app initiative along with penalty allowance. Submitting the same, the council requests, if there are no preliminary questions, to move who, to the who, second issue. Who exactly you say? There are two people involved against uh, whom you make allegations. One is the movie producing house. The other is the intermediary who has got the password technology. Uh, who exactly is to be blamed for? Your logic, it is the opposite party that is blameless. Because to secure its interest, it has directly acquired only one player in the market providing security system, that is SecPass, oh. and acquiring 50.01 percentage of its assets. Secondly, it has restricted to share this security system with any other player, provided that the whole market is under the havoc of password sharing problem emerging. And that is why we are alleging this combination as a void application. One more question. If the streaming company, the, the company that has the Monopoly over 
password breaking technology. Had they got any IPR, like a patent or copyright, do you think it would substantially change the issue? Illogic, as per relying on the case study, the facts are silent about the same. Okay. However, uh, as far as 50.01 percent stake are considered, uh, it, it would lead to control. However, IPR uh, is not explicitly provided under our case study. Thank you. Much obliged. Only one question. So I have more of fundamental kind, kind of question that uh, uh, yeah that you are arguing before an authority which has given approval to that combination. So where you find the legal basis to raise this issue before the same authority? Yeah, logic. Before the amendment of 2019, this combination used to firstly examine the combination. However. By introduction of green channel route, it leads to by submitting notice under Rule 5A, it leads to automatic approval of the combination. That is the explanation of the green channel approval. Indeed. I am saying once the combination stands approved, what are the remedies? What are the remedies before the person who is aggrieved by that approval? Where you find the legal basis in the scheme of the things, in the scheme of the act, to raise this question before the same authority, which has uh, uh, passed the which has approved the combination. The Lordship, if you may so refer to Rule 5A of the regulation, it says where the commission finds that the combination does not fall under Schedule 3 as supported, and if it has appreciable adverse effect, it shall be considered as void application, and that is from which the council is taking uh, reference. So, what are the material before you to uh, say that this combination? Uh, has some problems, so uh, the commission should uh, review it or consider it to get it invalidated. Your lordship, as submitted, it is the schedule three. Uh, and schedule three says that you should not have complementary overlap. They have complementary overlap. Secondly, under schedule four, they have submitted a declaration declaring that they are not causing appreciable adverse. Compliment, complementary uh, things is not something which is new. It may be a subject of interpretation, may be a legal issue which can be contested in the further appellate court. So, in absence of any power to review, where will you find the ground to stand to argue this that you should now invalidate the combination? Your Lordship, the council takes the referendum stance under Rule 5 way of the regulation itself and Schedule 3. No, Moving on to the second issue that Playflix has abused its dominant position. And to put relevance to the same, the council firstly identifies the relevant market to the case. You will agree that the entire market is fluctuating? Indeed. Uh, the business, the business is such. So how do you determine dominance in a fluctuating market? The lordship, it is considered as a lordship state that the market is volatile in itself. However, Playflix has time to time, and to put relevance to my argument, I would, I would put an analogy with respect to the timeline. In 2017, your logic, Playflix has cut down its subscription prices. Secondly, it has integrated, it has integrated SEPAS on its platform in 2019. In 2020, it has done an exclusive agreement with the production house Dairo. Third, fourthly. In 2021, it has discriminated in its pricing policy with the small production house. It shows a lot. Even if the market share is volatile, market shares and market is volatile, still Playflix continuously has led to maintain its dominance and abuse its dominance in the market. You will agree the other players have significantly gained. Indeed, a lot. Those, those were in the market. Your logic to clarify the same, it was only in 2019 when Big Show streamed the, uh, streamed the movie of Diver on its platform. Immediately, it led to growth in its uh, market share. Before and after that, there is nowhere provided. Playflix was the only dominant player in the market. Your logic. Okay. You would have anything to show us that in the fluctuating market, market, there is some doctrine where where you can live in uh, dominance and today you are dominant tomorrow you are not then the market is fluctuating how do you really claim that uh, there is dominance? Your logic 
the council rely on the factors provided under under section 19 clause 4 to determine that whether platelets is dominant or not and to uh, sub, uh, and to substantiate the same the council rely on the first factor that is the high market share the logic if we see the agreed facts from 2011 to 2022 that is 10 years platelets is dominant in market emerge second emerge the second factor of resources of platelets is considered it is the only player which is having a cutting edge uh, part of security services in its hand. Secondly, it is having the assets of 3600 crores in the country of Aizar and turnover of 9652 crores. The third factor to determine the dominance of plate reservation, it is the economic power. It has got an investment from an investment com company, Montec, and immediately after that, it made an arrangement with Cartel, which is a telecommunication company. Immediately after that, it has cut down its subscription prices to 50% in logic when it was still dominant in the market. Therefore, relying on the factors uh, laid down under Section 19 Clause 4, that is the high market share, resource advantage of security services, and thirdly, huge economic and commercial power, play fix full dominance. However, Council, cutting a price, cutting price as an introductory offer, for a limited period. Can you call it a predatory pricing? Your yeah, Lordship, the council rely on the agreed facts. That the 50% uh, subscription price cut was not for a period of time. It continues till another five, six to seven years. Second, your Lordship, it is the 50% market share cut down in its own uh, in its own price of the platelets as compared to the price of other platforms. The difference is 20% on an average alert, which has provided the clarification, which shows that the least, least subscription prices are with the Playflix. And the another point to consider logic is that, that Playflix provides variety of content, your logic, whereas other players provide a particular uh, entertainment content, which shows its dominance with respect to the subscription, uh, cutting subscription prices. So, uh, predatory pricing means providing something below the cost. So in this case, in such a uh, market, how will you reach at the exit cost to say that it's a case of predatory pricing? The logic has provided another proviso of section 4. Then predatory pricing is to be determined according to the cost. Secondly, the another requirement is that the intention behind cutting price should be that to, uh, that to make the competitors exit from the market and to affect the competition in the market at large. Where are you reading from the act, this thing, uh, in the predatory pricing? The logic proviso of section 4. four. If your logic, yeah, yes. your logic yeah. is with me, predatory yeah. pricing means that the sale of goods or provision of service at the price is below the cost as may be determined by regulation of 2009. Of the production of the goods Good. or Provision of services. the services to be with the view to reduce the competition or to eliminate the competitors. Yes, so but, but the cost is in any case the first thing. So how to arrive at the exit cost to contest that it is a case of predatory pricing? Well, as far as cost is considered, the council would rely on the clarification provided to us. Your logic Playflix is having the twenty percent less pri uh, subscription price as compared to the other sellers. Wherein we presume as the cost is not explicitly provided, but we interpret from the same that the average cost to be maintained to maintain the competition in the market should be the 20 uh, to that level of 20%. Exit cost cannot be determined here in the bench. So it should be near or about or one or two percent less or you know, like twenty percent less in a subsequent amount, which attracts the consumers on this platform. And that is why we are alleging that it is affecting the other competitors. In any harm to the consumers? Any harm to the consumers? The council seeks five seconds to the consumers. Okay, and one more thing, whether the competition is able to uh, maintain the competitors. If somebody uh, using good uh, uh, good uh, technologies or having better arrangements uh, with the uh, players in the market, upstream or downstream, is providing uh, something better and people are attracted to it. So 
whether it is the job of the competition authority or it is the spirit of the competition to maintain those competitors who, who could not uh, compete for some reasons. Now, should the council would answer the uh, questions of respective judges in three points. Firstly, under section four, it says that if any enterprise limits or restricts the technical scientific development relating to goods and services, it leads to abuse of dominance. Where the plaintiff has made an agreement with SEPAS not to share the service, it leads to abuse of dominance. Second, your lordship, uh, the council would, uh, to answer the question of your lordship, would rely on section 18 of the Competition Act, wherein the duty of the Honorable Commission is to eliminate the practices of AEC, promote and sustain competition along with protecting the interest of, uh, of the consumer. The logic, the interest of competitors in the market and the consumers go, go hand in hand and parallel to each other. None of the none of it could be pedestalized. That uh, that means a logic. If the consumers are giving are getting the subscription as uh, at fifty percent lesser price. Still, it is affecting the competitors in the market. And how logic to substantiate the same? The council rely on the clarifications provided. At the time, that is 2017 in when this 50% subscription price was uh, cut down, at that point of time, Playflix was the dominant play player with a 30% market share. Your logic big question that what was the need of cutting down the subscription price? Secondly, your logic, it is problematic because our users who are on platform who are who are on our platform and secondly the new users who will be uh, coming to render the services of online streaming would prefer to go with playflix now before because they are providing services 50 percent subscription pricing secondly a dynamic variety of services which include movies which includes sport content, which includes music, which covers, which affect all the competitors which are affected, which are getting affected in the market. But you can't blame them for being dynamic and providing wide variety. What is stopping you? Your yeah, lordship, it is a 50% subscription price because this le this variety of content is available at lesser price. And you you will get everything at on one content at, to, at such a uh, less price, your lordship. Not for the competitors or for the consumers? Pardon, you are for the competitors or the consumers? Who are you representing? Whom you are representing the involvement of the consumers? Or intermediary consumers or end users? The real consumers? We are representing intermediary consumers as of now. However, this commission is also concerned about the end users also. Thank you very much, Council. I think uh, the time is well done. Uh, we much call upon the next It was an honor leading before this commission. Much of And one more thing, you need, in fact, legally you need not to answer this question also. Even if you are not related to the things, you can file an information before the commission. It is not needed to be agreed. Yes. Indeed. Thank much you. Thank you. You are an informant. That's all. Yes. The Council seeks permission to approach the diet. Please. Much of life, on a little bit. Your Lordship, in the instant case, the Council would be dealing with Issue 2 and 3 as per the fact sheet. Issue 2 talks about whether the agreement between Playlist and Diwood is anti competitive or not. Your Lordship, it is most humbly submitted that the agreement between Playlist and Diwood is anti competitive in nature, and the same would be established in two contents. First, the agreement fulfills the request right for Section 3 clause 1. Secondly, the said agreement causes appreciable adverse effect in the competition. The Lordship issue three talks of issue three, uh, the Lordship section three of the act states that no enterprise shall enter into agreement which causes an appreciable adverse effect. And section three clause four of it specifically talks about vertical agreements, that is, agreements falling under different levels of supply chain. Now, the request rights of section three clause four are quoted as firstly. Both the entities are enterprises under Section 2 Clause H of the Competition Act. Secondly, they fulfill the definition of agreement under Section 2 Clause B, which includes arrangement. Thirdly, they fall under different levels of supply chain. And lastly, there exists an exclusive distribution agreement between Playflix and Daigo. 
uh, your logic moving on to my next contention being that the said agreement violates section 19 clause 3 of the act you logic know, under section 19 clause 3 there are six factors enshrined by which we determine how how appreciable adverse effect will take place the presence of first three factors indicate the restriction which will be imposed upon the comp in the competition and the presence of the last three factors are the pro competitive effects but in our case there are uh, there are negative factors only which are operating and there are no pro competitive effects which can be established as firstly plaintiff's conduct causes appreciable adverse effect and it can be proved as plaintiff's has market power the lordship generally it is established that enterprises which are holding more than 30% of the market share are considered to possess sufficient market power if the honorable bench may so refer to the case of global automobile dealers association versus global automobiles limited mentioned on para number 59 of our written submission the lordship if you may so refer to the nature of the case study as per the market report or report of 2022 the plaintiff's market share was 39% which was much higher than the second highest OEDS platform. Although, Plainflix acquisition of Zcars helped itself to place at a better technological position. Thus, this technological advancement and the market share helped Plainflix to grow and expand its market power. Now, your lordship, the agreement fulfills the first three requisites mentioned under 19 clause 3. In it, the first is the agreement is likely to drive the existing competitors out of the market. It is fulfilled as both Playflix and Daiwood is dominant in their relevant market. Daiwood is a popular production house which, which has a history of producing blockbuster movies. And its, uh, uh, and its content is liked by uh, people of ISAR. Its exclusivity with Playflix is basically hindering other OAVS platforms to, to provide quality content. Further, as Daiwood is dominant in its relevant market, so the other co-producers who want to approach Daiwood for collaborating their movies, they are also uh, they are also restricted to to release the movie on the on the same platform as of Daiwood. The lordship, the uh, if the honourable bench may so refer to the NHR again, the market has witnessed the exit of two production houses, that is, uh, Gazel and Texel. From the year 2019, uh, they were present in the year 2019, but in the year 2022, they have been exited, which means that the uh, that play, Playflix was abusing its position, and play, uh, which means that Playflix is uh, deploying uh, undiscriminatory practices, and it is basically driving the existing driving co existing competitors out of the market. Now, Lordship, we need to understand that Playflix has also asked. The facts are different. New players are I will also come in. If you go by the go by the 2019 table and the 2022 tables, new entrants have come. You so that is why earlier itself we asked fluctuation. We lost it. Yes. Uh, with regards to the uh, NHL debate, new metric, it is not mentioned anywhere in the fact sheet that new metric was a new entrant in the market. Earlier it was not there in the, the 2019. Your Lordship agreed with this, but it is it's a presumption, that's all. Indeed, your lordship agree. But there is a possibility that new metric might come come due to less market share in the previous years, might come under the category of others. The lordship Which we basically need to... means that their market share have increased. Hmm. Indeed, your lordship, it might be possibility that their market share would have increased and it is expected. And that we can showcase. Hmm. So... Your lordship, it is uh, it is also taken. It, it, it should also be taken into consideration that Playflix is asking exclusivity from other production houses also. And uh, due to this, we need to understand that if every production house agrees to uh, agrees to release its content exclusively on Playflix, there will be no uh, there will be no market left for OAVS platform to stream. Playflix had the intention of basically monopolizing the market. By this way, it is it is likely to drive the existing computers out of the market. But that's only an option. I mean, according to the facts of the case, Apex is saying you have an option to enter into an exclusive agreement. I, what is wrong in giving an option to the party? Agreed, honorable bench. But we need to take into consideration from the perspective of the production houses. Why would a production house choose Playflix? Because it has wider, it has higher market share. Plus, it has. Uh, better technological, uh, better technological advancement, uh, which means that uh, more audience will be attracted towards the platform of Playflix, and there will be more subscribers. 
So ultimately, they will gain more revenue. That is why their interest lies. The lordship, uh, the agreement is also likely to foreclose the competition. Firstly, the exclusive distribution agreement between Playfix and Daiwood is hindering other OAVS platform from getting better. Big Show, which once gained so much of popularity due to movie by uh, Daiwood, is now suffering huge losses and has lost its market spot. Daiwood is one of the production house which pulls public expectation and people like to watch the content of Aiza. Your Lordship, it is submitted that uh, if the Honorable Bench may so refer to page number 28 of our complaint here, yeah? in the case of Federation of Hotels versus uh, Make My Trip, it was, uh, it was submitted it was submitted by the CCI that both Make My Trip and OYO have considerable presence in their respective market segments. And any restrictive agreement, which may lead to refusal to deal with some players or exclusive agreement with some players, may potentially have an adverse effect on the competition. Okay. Can, can you elaborate on the, on, on the case? Indeed, Your Lordship. But you are reading very fast. Indeed, Your Lordship. Reading from your thing, fast. Uh, your Lordship, in this case, basically, uh, what the commission has, in this case, what the commission has observed that the Make My Trip and OYO both had the considerable presence in their market, and there was an exclusive agreement between Make My Trip and OYO, and due to this exclusive agreement, it was hindering other uh, other OTA platforms from rendering rendering their services. Thus, in this case, it is uh, observed by the commission that as both have both ha were having substantial market power and presence their exclusivity might lead to adverse effect. The also of the third criteria, that is the entry barrier, is uh, it also restricted in our case as we need to take into consideration that if an OAVS platform wants to enter into the market, it will preferably choose Diver because it was producing blockbuster movies to gain more revenue. And if there is exclusivity between Playflix and Daiwood, there will be a there will be huge entry barrier and the new production houses will face huge difficult new OAVS platforms will face huge difficulty at the prem of a site to uh, uh, to get a wider audience. Now, your lordship, in our case, the pro competitive effects are also not pertinent, and the same will be established as there is no accrual of benefits to consumers. In the instant case, the consumers have to stick themselves to play fix only if they want to see good quality, uh, if they want to see good quality of content. And they at a reduced price. Uh, at a reduced price. Indeed, you are no difference in the quality. Quality remains the same. Ah. Whichever service provider you get it actually. There is no change in quality. Indeed, you launch it. But we need to take into consideration that if a user wants to see the content of Daiwood in a better quality, such as Big Show, it will not be able to do so. Because your co 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 said, uh, the competitors are providing better quality. Indeed, your logic, but we are saying that the exclusivity between Playflix and Daiwood is also restricting the product, other production houses from showcasing the content of Daiwood. So, uh, if the so the consumer don't have the option uh, left if they want to see the content of Daiwood in a good quality. That's why we are alleging that there is uh, that the consumers are not benefited by this and they have to agree with the absurd terms and conditions of Playflix by sharing their geolocation. If, if you are if you are sitting and eating in a air conditioned restaurant, you pay extra. If you are sitting outside, you pay less. So you are paying less for less quality of services. What is common? I just gave you an hypothetical situation. So if you pay more, the quality will be more. You are paying very less. Fifty percent of the what they already the prices have been slashed. Lord, so you with the, what about the quality? Then the quality will be according to the price which you are paying. Indeed, your lordship. The market is all about. Indeed, your lordship agree. Now we need to take into consideration that Playfix uh, highest quality was one zero eight zero p. Now it has uh, in, uh, it has. Uh, it has reduced the subscription charges by 50% for its own benefit. Basically, it was trying to establish the dominance in the market by capturing the monopoly. And it has already been dealt by my co-counsel in the previous issue. Maybe the cost production is less because they are, they are able to negotiate and get the, uh, the movies in, in, a, in a reduced price. Therefore, ultimately, that will reflect in or calculating the cost price. Therefore, the cost price is less. Therefore, the subscription, there is a slash in there. Subscription. Indeed, it is a chain of action. 
in the dealership, it is to be taken into consideration that places were also deploying tactics. To, to delay the negotiation of the small production houses. And the internal survey of EPA reveals that the other production houses were left with no option than to agree with the arbitrary and unfair, unfair uh, conditions imposed upon them by the platelets. Thus, in this way, we are alleging that the production houses have no option left than other, rather than to exit the market. What is the mandate of the commission? Is it to protect the competitors or is it to protect the competition With or the consumers or look at consumer welfare? Indeed, your lordship. The consumer, uh, consumer welfare, though may be the objective of the uh, competition uh, commission, but the uh, but the interest of the, uh, the but the interest of the other uh, competitors also have to be kept into mind. Uh, uh, the commission cannot. Uh, the commission cannot look solely on the interest of the consumers. If uh, if the competition has to sustain in the market, then there is necessary, uh, there is the requisite that the competitors must be present in the market. But the facts suggest, for example, uh, how we mentioned earlier also, some, well, while play fix uh, market share has increased, no doubt, from 2019 to 22. But there have been other players also like new medtech, which has gained market share. So, it was another thing if everyone was losing market share and Playfix was increasing market share. But the fact suggests otherwise. The Lordship, it is pertinent to note that Playflix alone market share in the year 2022 was 39%. And the uh, and the shares of the next two big competitors, that is uh, Tywood and the Sports Play, were combined less. If combined together, were less than the share of Playfix, which means that Playfix was having the dominant position in the market, and it was trying to uh, monopolize the market. Your Lordship, if the Honorable Bench is satisfied, the uh, uh, Council seeks permission to move to the next issue. Yeah, yeah, go. Your Lordship, the next issue talks about whether the arrangement between Playfix and Cartel is anti-competitive or not. The Council would like to uh, establish this in two holes. First, the Playfix, uh, Playfix arrangement into uh, Playfix arrangement with Cartel has likely to cause appreciable adverse effects. Secondly, the exchange of user data due arrangement has anti-competitive effect. Now, to substantiate my first point, with our chip, it is submitted firstly that the collaborative arrangement is qualifying the definition of agreement under Section Two Clause B. If the Honorable Bench may uh, refer to the case of Rama Kankini versus Hira Nandani Hospital, it was said in that case. That uh, mention on which is also mentioned of footprint number 101 of our written submission. That 3 clause 1 is independent of section 3 clause 3 and 3 clause 4. And I do not have limitation or application of the aforementioned subset uh, or aforementioned section. Now we need to take into consideration that the agreement between Playfix and Cartel was not falling under the category of horizontal agreement and was also not falling under the category of vertical agreement. However, it was falling under the category of Section 3, Clause 1, which has a standalone applicability, which whereby it includes any agreement. Now, Your Lordship, uh, any agreement is per se not anti competitive unless and until. In your case, where is the need to uh, go to the question of independent invocation of Section 3, 1? When your case, as per you, is covered under Section 3, 4, so why are you flagging this issue of independent invocation of Section 3, 1? How it helps you? Indeed, your lordship, but in our case, the, the agreement is not fulfilling the requirements of section 3 clause 4. That's why we are alleging it is falling under section 3 clause 1, which has an independent application. Your lordship, now to, uh, not to elaborate how this exchange of user data due arrangement has anti competitive effect. It is pertinent to note that to utilize the services of Playflix, the customer has to create an account using its ID and password. This has led to an agreement between Playflix and user, which includes essential sharing of storage data of user device with Playflix. The agreement is leading to a standard form of contract, wherein it is is basically infringing the user's privacy. And by this data collection, Playflix is determining a user's behavior, its preferences, so as to dominate the market, so as to gain more and more users. 
Your Lordship, if the Honorable Bench may so refer to the case of National Restaurant Association versus Zomato Limited, it is cited on footnote number one written. Uh, the Commission in this case observed that data selection is one of the factors that will overall impact on the competition in market. In, and, uh, and it was considered as anti competitive at least likely to cause entry barrier for new entries. In the instant case, accumulation of data by politics due to this arrangement is creating an entry barrier. Now, your lordship. Uh, Sorry, how is it creating entry barrier? Indeed, your lordship. Now, your lordship, we need to understand that Playfix is already having 39% of the market share. And Cartel is also having the, such a dominant position by having 46% of share in the telecommunication sector. Now, Playflix, is, uh, Playflix has aided advantages as it is having the security system tool. It has aided advantage of the data collection of users. Plus, it has its agreement with Cartel is basically in incentivizing the uh, consumer. Now, the oh, actually, I will put a point to this question. Uh, if you look at the chart in page 13, please. The last two entries. You said there is an entry barrier. From the chart, I see your metric, new player has accumulated 5% share. And you will also see other share from the previous 2% last year had become to 4%. So, in view of this statistics, do you think your conclusion that there is an entry barrier is correct? Your Lordship, we need to take into consideration that if an OAVS platform wants to enter into a market, now it will think that the 46% has already been, forty-six that a telecom sector has 46% in the market share and it is already, uh, it is already favoring the users of Playfix by giving them a uh, by giving them sub free subscription of places for three months. Now it will it will be very difficult for it to enter into the market, and the comp and the uh, competition will be devoid of the market. There is only one uh, one uh, telecom sector, one service, cartel alone, or any any other services are there. The lordship, there are other services as well, but it is pertinent to note that cartel was having forty six percent of the market share, which is a major. Uh, dominance is different. I'm just asking you, presence of other players, presence of other players in the in the telecom sector, whether it will give you exclusiveness or it will prevent others to enter into the market. And and therefore, option for o yeah. other OABS uh, players to enter into similar types with other telecom. Your Lordship, uh, answering to this question, we need to take into consideration the perspective of the telecommunication sector. Why our telecommunication wants to make agreement with a uh, big OABS platform so that it can incur, it can also incur huge profits. If a telecommunication company will uh, make agreement with small OABS platform, it will not lead to, uh, it, it will not lead to such benefits to them. That is why we are uh, creating, we are, we are saying that uh, though as Playfix was dominant in its play, telecommunication sector, Cartel is also having such a significant presence. Let us see from the, from the sources of uh, Cartel. They are giving 10 GB and also SIM card is also a free of cost. So, what, what from this perspective, whether new entrants will be discouraged or not? Your Lordship, we need to take into consideration from the perspective of telecommunication sector. That's that what I'm asking for the telecommunication sector alone. You are repeating the same, beating the same bush. You are not giving us the answer. Pardon your Lordship. If a telecommunication sector wants to buy a telecommunication want, a sector wants to enter into agreement with such a big production house as Playfix, so that it can incur huge amount of profits to it. Now, if a boy is the point is when it is temporary, free sim and all 10 GB data for three months, whether it is introductory, what my brother Jaja earlier asked, it is only introductory offer from the cartel point of view. The answer cartel point that telecommunication. Consideration from the telecommunication point of view, it is only introductory offer for only for three months. From this perspective, whether there is bar on entering new entrants, that's all. Uh, you know, actually, we need take we need to take into consideration from the perspective of the OABS platform also. Oh, we are we are going to OABS, not from the telecom sector. You know, actually, but the interest here lies of the OABS platform, not of the uh, telecommunication sector, because uh, because uh, Playfix market. The definition of collaborative agreement. Collaborative agreement, you'll also be.
what is the nature of it should be interpreted how it should be understood are you watching with the honorable bench permits the complete extension of time you yeah, could answer then you know chip collaborative arrangement basically means that when two or when two of the uh, players are entering into agreement which is mutually beneficial to both of them you know chip but we need to we need to take into consideration that in this case platex market share was significantly rising due to its agreement with carter that it is mutually agreeable whether we should, we should take it in whole or separate from the telecommunication point of view or from the uh, from the uh, on the online point of view. Uh, market Uh, indeed, relevant market. It indeed, your logic agree. Now, the council would like to again stick to the fact that a telecommunication sector will not enter into agreement with a with such a various platform, which is not having a significant market presence. It will not incur any losses on its account. <laughs> This violation of the act, then try will be there. Telecommunication supervisory body will be there. Indeed, you are not addressing that issue. Uh, you know, but in our case, the uh, the the present issue deals with the agreement. Oh, it is only from the online platform. That's all. Indeed, you know, now you know, uh, the agreement. Just one question, just a yes or no answer. Yes. yes. Are you arguing that there is a? Are you alleging that there is a collective dominance case here? Yes or no? No, you know, then. You know, Chip. We are uh, we are basically saying that due to agreement of Platix and Cartel, Platix has abused its dominant position, and uh, it is therefore violating. It's only according to you, the abuse of dominance is only by Platix, ah, and not other actors. Indeed, you know, Chip. And due to due to uh, its agreement with various entities such as Secpas, Plat, uh, such as Divert and Cartel, it is abusing it. If I were you, I will throw mud at two people. At least with one, it will stick, right? I said, if I throw mud at two people at the same time, at least against one, it will stick, right? Because your role is informant. It will take against. Okay, you are not arguing for one particular. I think you are informant. You are presenting was admirable, and uh, you did your job well, and your time is up. As uh, the lady has been rightly reminding us. Thank you very much for your respectful. Much obliged, Lord. It was pleasant to argue before this. Thank you very much. Thank you. The council seeks permission to oppose the directive. Good afternoon to the honourable commission. May it please the honourable commission, I, along with my co-counsel, are here to represent the respondent. The council seeks permission to individually refer the bench as sir. Much obliged. Who are you exactly representing? Can you guide us? There are too many parties actually. Yes. Are you representing Playtex or yeah? Are you representing Skywood? Who are you exactly representing? So we are representing all the four parties. All the four. Opposing. Are you sure that there will be no conflict of interest? So because uh, uh, the main opposing party, that is the Playtex in the present case, have entered into agreements with the other parties, that is the production house Skywood, as well as the telecom services provider Carter. And yes, so all case, all four. Yes, sir. Right. Because in some of the issues, we have to uh, show their dominance or relevant market as well. So we would be presenting the side of all the four parties. Uh, yeah, all the four four issues, one party is involved in one way or directly or involved indirectly. That should be the approach. Yes, yes. So I'm council number one, and over the course of next twenty one. Oh, please, 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 please. Yes, yes. I shall be addressing the first and second issue of the respondent, and my co-council shall be addressing the third and fourth issue. Okay. Furthermore, we have reserved three minutes minutes for rebuttals. For rebuttal. Uh, for rebuttals. Okay. Also, would the bench like a brief producer of facts before okay. that? Unless you finding you want to project one or all, you want to do it. Otherwise, you can be sure that we are familiar with the facts. All right. If you want to allow the facts, which are which are which are beneficial, please do. Okay. So, uh, sir, in uh, 2016, the Bench Council was presented with market share and revenue were on a decline. So, it decided to secure investment from Montec, that is a financial investment company. 
Also, so council before council before you before you proceed, could you uh, please first satisfy us why at all you should be heard on issue number one? You misrepresented before the commission and got the approval as they are alleging. So how will you address that? That is the preliminary question. Once it is satisfied, only then you can uh, proceed to address on the issue one. All right, sir. So we have been given approval by the commission and approval by the competition commission. But the informant side is alleging that uh, it is not valid and we are going to prove the same that no, uh, since we have uh, fulfilled all the conditions under Schedule 3, Rule 5A, and as well as our side is not causing appreciable adverse effect on the competition in the market, so that's why we are eligible to present the side of the opposing parties. And also, in the case of green channel transactions, the uh, commission forms a prima facie view that if the parties have self assistance and no appreciable adverse effect is being caused, all the conditions are being satisfied, then they grant the automatic approval. But on all out does the burden of proof lies? It lies on the informant side. So I thought you got the green channel approval. Yes. Sir. You exercise all the control yes. over all the facts that has resulted in the dispute. So under Indian Evidence Act, the burden of proving facts that are in one's control is on that person. Don't you think it is you who should justify that uh, there is nothing blatantly wrong about that? So the burden, I think, will be on you and not on them. Sir, in general cases, uh, it is on the petitioner side only. No, not, not in, in that case. Thing. With respect to green channel filings. Yes, if you made a green chain and filing and got the, got the automatic uh, approval, then the fallout is that in case you have submitted something wrong, misrepresented anything, then you will have to suffer. So it's not directly burden of proof in a uh, proceeding, but if you have filed a combination under the green channel, it got approved automatically in terms of the green channel procedure. And if you have misrepresented or given anything for any information which is wrong otherwise, then the fallout is that you will have to suffer that uh, uh, combination has to go. Uh, so the commission also provides a uh, hearing chance to both the parties to present their arguments. Uh, if they are of the opinion that uh, appreciable adverse effect is being caused, and here we are going to represent the same facts. Please proceed. So okay. Just one question, but green channel, and then you can proceed with the other. Green channel is a self assessment regime, right? You need to assess whether you qualify for green channel. Yes. You assess that you qualify, the other side is saying that you are wrongly. So the question is, do you assess rightly or wrongly that your transaction qualifies for green channel? Sir, I'm going to assess it rightly only. The green channel, uh, the informant side has said that the schedule three is not being fulfilled, that we are causing overlap, but I'm going to prove the same that overlaps are not being caused under schedule three. Okay. So, first of all, green channel transaction, like as sir has already stated, it is a scheme whereby the transacting parties are required to self assess themselves that they are not causing any uh, overlaps, and then such transaction is deemed to be approved by the competition commission. Rule 5A mandates that the transacting parties have to file a notice and a declaration that the appreciable adverse effect in the competition is not being caused. And according to paragraph 23 of the mode proposition, our side has filed a notice as well as a declaration that the appreciable adverse effect is not being caused and hence the conditions that are specified under Rule 5A is being fulfilled. Then moving on to the Schedule 3 of the combination regulation. It says that the parties also have to self assess that they are not causing any kind of overlap. It talks about horizontal, vertical, and complementary overlaps. So it defines horizontal overlaps. Which one uh, you see more applicable to this case or none? So, uh, according to my side, horizontal and vertical overlap. Okay. So, horizontal overlap exists if the parties provide or manufacture similar, identical, or substitutable goods or services. In our case, TechPath is providing password authentication and encryption services, whereas Playflix is providing online audio-video streaming services. Now, both of these services that are being provided are not similar or substitutable, and hence there exists no horizontal overlap. Then, 
vertical overlap exists if the parties are uh, involved in a uh, different levels of the production chain now in the present case i agree that uh, secpas is acting as a producer of password encryption and authentication services and Playflix is a distributor as it is distributing the streaming services to the end user that is the consumer but they are not forming the part of the same production chain Playflix is part of the film distribution chain according to the market study that was submitted uh, that was conducted by the competition commission of india and since both of these parties are not forming the part of the same production chain there exists no vertical overlap as well moving on to the last part of the argument of this issue the successful execution of the transaction is also not causing appreciable adverse effect on competition in the market as per section 20 clause 4 of the act we submit that there is no appreciable adverse effect on competition in the market because the substitutes are available there are substitutes to sectpath and there are competitors to playflix now these competitors of playflix can approach the substitute of sectpath to get the same password encryption and authentication services also playflix was the first platform to approach the sectpath and hence it has a first movers advantage and it is also not that the services that is being provided by sectpass was not known it was widely reported in the media as per the clarifications so these competitors of playflix had a chance to approach the substitutes of sectpass as well and our second argument is that there also exists a degree of countervailing power as per section 20 clause 4 sub clause d of the combination act so countervailing power is a bargaining strength that a buyer has with respect to the seller and its ability to switch to alternative suppliers and in our case there exist reputable competitors to play with and it, dem and it demonstrates that the consumers are not entirely dependent on play flex. but what is your just to sorry to cut you off but what is your intent behind making sec, not making sec pass available to others is it not a different business for you is it not a revenue stream for you? You would you would only benefit if you provide those services to others. You will get more. Sekpas will earn more, generate more revenue. What is the problem? They are not providing the same, uh, the password encryption and authentication services that is particularly being offered by Sekpas. It is our business strategy. It is an innovative business model that has been introduced by us. For example, if we take the uh, like contemporary example of Bumble, like Bumble, when it came to the into the market, Tinder was already a dominant enterprise. But Bumble introduced an innovative business strategy that women would make the first move. They would be the first to message. And in the same case, we are also using it as a business strategy and an innovative business model. And like that's our intention in the present case. So, but aim of any business is to create more business, to create more revenue. Uh, your team should be uh, killing the competition. Uh, sir, no, uh, it is not killing the competition because, as I have already stated, there are other enterprises available in the market as well that is providing the password encryption and authentication services. It is not necessary then, for then, big show and Then, uh, don't you think it is more prudent for you to eat with others and get more access to the market, have more share, more revenue? instead of allowing others to gain, uh, is it a good business to do? So what is your justification? Uh, sir, our justification is that the, through the acquisition of sectors, we have got a tool that is helping us to curb the menace of password sharing. And if the other parties want the access to the same tool, then they can approach the uh, other enterprises that are offering the same services and also because uh, the Playflix was the first enterprise that approached Techpath and as I've already stated that it will have a first mover's advantage. So uh, now if the bench does not have any further question, I would like to move on to issue number two, sure. which is whether the arrangement between Playflix and Dilute is anti-competitive. So first of all, uh, I would like to state that it was not mandatory for the production houses to enter into an exclusive agreement with Playflix. And second, 
as per uh, the case of Southern Pacific Communication Company versus American Telephone and Telegraph Company. Also, as per the case of Independent Inc. Uh, versus Illinois Tools Work, in, uh, the, in their business is interest, the enterprises can refuse to supply its production. And in the present case also, the chairman of Divert has stated that they want to promote those platforms that are trying to curb the menace of password sharing and hence they are going to share their content that they are producing with PlayFix only. And also, uh, this agreement is not anti-competitive because it is not causing appreciable adverse effect on competition in the market. Now, for proving appreciable adverse effect, first of all, it is very important to show that an enterprise has a market power. As per the case of Tamil Nadu Consumer Products Distributors Association versus Pans Technology Private Limited. And market power can be proved with the help of variety of factors, such as the market share, size and resources of the enterprise, economic power of the enterprise, consumer dependence on the enterprise, and as well as its competitors. In the present case, Big Show in sports play also holds 20% and 15% of the market share respectively, demonstrating that the consumers are not entirely dependent on Netflix. Also, while entering into the market, both of them used innovative business strategy, like sports play projected itself as a platform for the youth and provided sports content, and uh, Big Show provided the, uh, uh, its content in high resolution quality. Also, in the case of East India Petroleum Private Limited versus South Asia LPG Gas Private Limited, it was uh, stated that even if, a, even if an enterprise holds 45% of market share, it does not conclude the fact that the enterprise has a market power. Also, uh, if the bench may allow, we have prepared a HHI index. Uh, that is the Arcandial Hishman Index which is widely used in US as well as the European Union. So with the help of the same, we have demonstrated that uh, Platelix does not have a market share, the market power, because the formula for uh, calculating the same is, we take the sum of the squares of the market share. And if it is above 2,500 points, then the enterprise has a market concentration that demonstrates high market power. But the calculations that we have made in all the relevant tables, the data that has been provided, uh, it is less than 2,500% and that demonstrates that the enterprise does not have the market power. The HHI is used to see the concentration in the market, how concentrated the market is, right? Yes, sir. Now, concentration in the market only gives you an indication of um, whether then it will be possible for new players to come in the market or not, correct? Now, the concentration suggests that from 2016 to 2022, concentration has increased, not significantly, it has increased. But by this, you want to show that there is less concentration in the market, right? Yes, sir. But the concentration is increasing. So the trend suggests that, you know, there will be this transaction, this, uh, this uh, market will be more and more concentrated. So, sir, first of all, I would like to point out that just through the help of uh, market concentration, we can show that an enterprise has a market power. The same is stated in the EU glossary on competition law, as well as the EU guidelines on vertical resting. Now, in the present case, even though the market concentration is increasing, but in all the scenarios, it has remained below 2,500 points. And the high concentration uh, arises only when the threshold limit of 2,500 points is being crossed. So that's why we submit that uh, Netflix does not have the market power to cause appreciable adverse effect on the competition in the market. And also, we are going to prove it uh, with the also, just one more question. I mean, yes. HHI is one of the very old tools which was used more relevant for manufacturing sector. Yes. You are working in a service industry. Is there any other tool that you uh, applied or looked at? Yes, sir. So, we have also taken into consideration the size and resources and the economic power and the consumer dependence of the competitors of Netflix. Like I have mentioned, as I have already mentioned, 
that big show and sports play also holds 20% and 15% of market share in the market, demonstrating that the consumers are not entirely dependent on play play. And also I have mentioned the innovative business strategies that were used by big show and play clicks while entering into the market. And then uh, in the case of East India Petroleum Private Limited versus South Asia LPG Company Private Limited, it was said that even if the threshold limit of 45% is being crossed, then also it is not a valid proof that the enterprise has a market power. And in the present case, the market share of Netflix is stated as 39%, which is less than 45%. And also, <coughs> we demonstrate that the appreciable adverse effect is not being caused because there is no foreclosure of market and the agreement has no competitive effect as it is promoting competition in the market. First of all, there is no market uh, foreclosure because Playflix has not entered into exclusive agreement with all the production houses. There are still other production houses available uh, uh, with whom Big Show and Sportsplay can enter into a uh, arrangement. And also, Playflix was able to enter into the same arrangement because of the technological innovations it had. And as is stated by the chairman of Divert, that they are trying to promote the platform that are trying to curb the issue of password sharing. Also, it is felicitating competition in the market because uh, by entering into an exclusive agreement, the distributors would put in more efforts in promoting the content that they are going to stream on their platform and it would increase interbrand competition. Also, the Competition Commission of India in the market study of film distribution has clearly stated that uh, uh, exclusivity is necessary for getting this for getting exhibitors to in, invest in content as well as promote the content. Also, it is necessary for the production houses to enter into exclusivity because it helps them to recoup their investment in the films and also uh, it plays an important role in the creation of content. Also, in the end, I would like to cite some contemporary example regarding the exclusive agreements. So, Amazon Prime has an exclusive agreement with Yashraj Film, in which the production house has said that they are going to release all their five upcoming projects, that is, Jashe Bhai Jorda, Shamshera, Pathan, Tiger Tree, and Prithviraj on Amazon Prime only. And also, there is another production house, that is Excel Entertainment, owned by Mr. Faran Akhtar and Mr. Ritesh Sudhwani, and they have also said, that their five upcoming projects, that is Phone Booth, Yutra, Kukre 3, Jile Zara, Kogai Hamkaha, it is going to be released on Amazon Prime only. And in both of the present cases, neither the competition commission, neither the, nor the competitors of these production houses have raised any concern that these exclusive ag uh, agreements would cause, uh, uh, would be anti-competitive and would cause appreciable adverse. So, but there the matter is it to play out. Now here things have already happened. You no, know, probably after about a year or so, yes. it, we find that you know this has really made a substantial dent in the market. It may, may change it. I mean, I mean uh, something that is likely to happen is not a justification for something that has already happened. Okay. I just want to be yes. clear. I would like to clarify that these two contemporary examples that I have I have cited, they are also not recent. They are one or two years old. Like three of the movies that I have mentioned, they have already released. And since the time be has very passed, frank, I don't know any of the programs which you are talking about. No. But uh, that's why I wasn't aware that uh, two, two or no. three have already taken place. Go yes, ahead. Two or three of the content have already released. But council, you are, you are citing some names of some production houses in some other country. We are sitting in Aiza. So, you know, we are we have to stick to the facts. Uh, sir, uh, since and, we are... And there, are, there are more facts also. It's their choice. Like, they are saying that they will do the commission. But the commission says that if you want to produce pictures and going to exhibit, come through us only. Then there is a problem. So, your case is slightly different from the example you are giving. But sir, uh, as uh, I've already stated, the condition that is being posted is not mandatory 
and the production house in its business interest and uh, strategic and business interest can refuse for the same. And also answering Sir's question that uh, all since we are already taking the laws of India as parry material, I guess we should also take these examples as parry material only. It's my humble request. Yes, because uh, drawing analogy. Uh, drawing analogy. <laughs> no, drawing analogy. Comparative content analogy. Yes. 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 Uh, you show there is no abuse of dominance. Why should you be so defensive? Sir, uh, we have still not addressed the abuse of dominance part. My co counsel shall be addressing There's no need to be so defensive if there is no abuse of dominance. Yes. That's a weak point. Sir, I was just trying to make my point on the argument. Right. Okay, counsel, you will have one minute. Suppose you had missed out anything. Your time is already up, as I have yes. been told. Please you would like to. Impress upon something in one minute, please do that. Sir, I've already uh, uh, covered all my arguments. If okay, the bench good. would like uh, to go there. Right. What is that you want us to do actually in this case? Okay. So, sir, sir, first of all, I would I want that uh, the acquisition of SecPass should be held valid. Means the bench should not declare that this acquisition is invalid. And also the agreement that we have entered into with Diamond should not be held to be anti-competitive because it is causing pro-competitive effect as I've already stated and so the, uh, the bench should consider the same. Thank you very much. For you. Why, are you, why are you hesitant in not arguing that this uh, competition authority once having approved the combination has no jurisdiction to uh, review that? Do you have any problem in arguing that? So because if uh, any prima facie case or arguments arises in front of the in front of the competition commission, then the competition commission uh, conducts an inquiry. So that's why so I was not hearing. Jurisdiction is the first thing which has to be argued yes. if there is a case of lack of jurisdiction. So why don't you take help of uh, the provisions to say that there be express appellate provisions, uh, the uh, competition authority for now should explain from Going into the question of uh, deemed approval, which had already been there. All right. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council. We call I'm upon the next. Please, please, please. Yes, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. We have it here. Uh, in the present case, sir, there is an arrangement, uh, there is an agreement between cartel and Playfix where Playfix is providing three month subscription, free subscription to customers of cartel, and in return of which cartel is providing 10 GB data, free 10 GB data, and free SIM card to the customers of Playfix. This, sir, uh, a practice is very common in the present times. For instance, uh, in the present times, Airtel is providing a subscription of, uh, of Netflix, Airtel is also providing subscription of Hotstar. This, sir, uh, is a very common practice in the present time and also furthermore cci in a study on telecom sector said that these OTD platforms and telecom sector have a very symbiotic relationship in nature because this telecom sector push more data through these agreements from ott services platforms and ott services platforms benefits from uh, benefits from the large consumer base of the telecom uh, or large consumer base of telecom sector companies. Thus, it is beneficial on the both sides. Thus, the present agreement is being made. Further, we contend that there is no negative effect of this agreement, whereas there are no competitive effects of these agreements. Uh, this agreement was done because uh, as a report and uh, as uh, as the facts as stated in the fact sheet paragraph, paragraph number 20, uh, Less than one percent of two to five million OTT viewers pays uh, for its content. Uh, 
uh, in the paragraph 20 also, it says that 62 million people were watching the content of Playflix, whereas only 27 uh, million were its subscribers. Thus, this is making Playflix going into losses. So this is just a business strategy, a mere business strategy, an agreement with Playflix come up, uh, came up with uh, with Cartel in order to in order to collect the consumer base. Probably your client was punching the TRP rating. Yes, that, that's quite possible when you estimate that there are only 28 lakh authorized users and there are about uh, 64 people who actually access it. So what does it mean actually? Yes, sir. When a large consumer base is watching the content of Playflix, but only less than half of it, or of those consumers are paying for it, it means that it is going into losses. Though it is providing services to a large consumer base, but not all of them are paying for its services. Thus, it has to come up with business strategies in order to cover up the losses and the revenue. No, no, they are doing it only because you permit them to do it actually. Oh, yes, sir. This, uh, this present scenario where uh, this present scenario was the major significant problem where uh, not only Playflix but all the competitors in the OAVS platforms were facing because uh, there was no password encryption services. People were sharing their password. People still do. And because of sharing these passwords, uh, uh, the people, the consumer base, were, the viewers were uh, in a very high number. But the people who were paying for it were in a low number because the password uh, password was being shared. And after this agreement, the, uh, the acquisition of SecPass or the tool was uh, acquired by Playflix. Then after this agreement, this problem was resolved. Okay. Moving ahead, sir, uh, we contend that there are no anti-competitive effects of this agreement, but there are pro-competitive -pro effects of this agreement. Uh, there has to be, uh, if uh, an enterprise is doing well in the market, it promotes innovation in the market. In the present case, uh, Playflix came up with a business strategy. It is promoting innovation in the market because other consumer, uh, because other competitors of Playflix will also come up with new innovative strategy, which will eventually boom internal competition in the market, eventually flourishing the economy. For instance, uh, 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 internal competition is very important uh, in economy. For instance, India is booming in IT sector in uh, across the world because uh, IT companies within India, TCS, Infosys, Wipro are in internal competition. In Japan, electronics is booming because these com electronics companies in Japan are in high internal competition. Thus, uh, by making these strategies, other competitors will also come up with new strategies with new innovation and internal competition will be boomed. For instance, sir. Uh, but how are you uh, promoting internal competition when you don't want to uh, share sec part? And then you, you have to coin this term and your everything that you're doing, you're saying is a business strategy. You entering into a, arrangement with uh, Caltel is a business strategy. You making TechPass exclusive, although this is a business in itself, is a business strategy. And then you say this promotes internal company. I'm a little confused how it uh, is actually promoting. Uh, sir, in the present case, this uh, when we are talking about the agreement between Playflix and Cartel, we are saying that because they, uh, this was an innovative strategy, Cartel and Playflix came up with providing services to the consumers of Cartel and Playflix both. Now, these services were being provided that because both the parties attract a large consumer base. Now, because we are attracting a large consumer base, of course, the sole purpose of any enterprise is to, uh, is to, uh, is profit making. The other competitors in the market will also want to keep par with these parties and will come up with new uh, innovative technology or these business strategies such as these. For instance, so in the automobile industry, uh, when Tesla came into picture, it disrupted other players in the market because of the innovative techniques it, it came up with. Hello. Yeah, thank you. Thus, so, uh, it is promoting internal competition. There are no negative effects on competition in the present case, in the present agreement. Also, this is providing benefits to the customers. We are providing free, uh, Playflix is providing free services to the customers. Also, uh, there's the compulsion on uh, the customers of Playflix or Cartel that they have to uh, avail the services of both the parties. They anytime have an option to switch to other substitutes of Cartel and of Playflix whenever they want to. If I may move on to issue number four. Yes, yes, please. Much of thanks.
Uh, issue number four uh, is so whether Platrix has abused this dominant position in the market. We submit that neither Platrix is dominant in the present market and neither has it abused its dominance in the present market. Uh, in the case of Union Bank's Commission versus Commission of uh, versus Commission, uh, Commission of Europe, uh, it was said that uh, if an entity either has a share a share or a market share of 40 to 45 percent, it cannot be said uh, it cannot be said on the sole purpose of this parameter that the entity is a dominant entity in the market. Thus, even if the market share of platelets is slightly higher than other competitors of platelets uh, and is presently, uh, uh, as per the latest data, 39%, uh, it is. Uh, the council, not... one minute. Please uh, look up uh, page 13 of your uh, written submission. Sir. I have it here. Yeah. Page 13. Yes. Uh, the relevant market in the present case is. Market for wind distribution in Azar. What is actually the issue here? Is it the market of flim distribution or is it the password prevention busting technology? What is the relevant market? Yes, sir. Uh, I thought the problem says it otherwise. Yes, sir. Uh, so answering your question, sir, so in, uh, in uh, a separate issue with uh, acquisition of uh, SecPass, which is an entity, uh, uh, which is an entity performing its services in a market which is dealing with password and encryption, there the uh, relevant market for SecPass has also has, has been defined by DG uh, as stated in the fact sheet itself. Uh, there the relevant market is password sharing market. In the present case, we say that the relevant market for platelets is such what has been uh, written in the submission. Uh, so the, the, the question that uh, uh, was asked was uh, you have said the market and market for film distribution. The DG report says that uh, Netflix is dominant in the market of OAVS, uh, market for OAVS, correct? Now, why are you saying? There are 36 of you. In your paragraph 53, page 13, why are you arguing that the market should be market for film distribution? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Answering the question, moving ahead, uh, the heading says that uh, the present market in the pre uh, the relevant market in the present case is market of film, uh, film distribution in SR. But uh, uh, when we have interpreted the same, we have come on to the conclusion uh, of the report which has been stated by DG, and we have said that OAPS platforms which are competing in the market that that is the relevant market of play uh, in paragraph number fifty-five. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead yeah. Please. Please. Right. Okay. Don't you think your uh, this uh, para fifty six yes. is the answer? Yes. Para, para fifty six is the answer for the question asked. Why? Why? Why are you distinguishing the uh, uh, film distribution in either versus the uh, services provided by the OTT platforms? So you are saying that OTT platforms. Or a part of film distribution. So perhaps you are enlarging the market, don't you think, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, so while the uh, while the definition of relevant market in the present case pertaining to platelet as uh, submitted by DG is OAVS platforms that can be considered, but in a broader perspective, if we see uh, the the relevant market for uh, film distribution in Izar, which is the territory, uh, which is the territory in the present case, can also be considered because uh, these OAVS platforms are mere advancement in these fields. Can also be considered, or should be considered to your benefit. If market is enlarged, if the, the relevant market is enlarged, that benefits you while assessing the dominance. Please, please proceed. Right. Yeah. So the question is whether a market area is reduced, your dominance will be inversely proportional. God, that is what we want. If you are, it is, market area is geographically changed and dominance position may come less or whatever it is. Yes, sir. So we are contending that uh, there is a broader market in the present case. That is what we are That's what, that's what that we wanted. Yes. Uh, moving ahead. Uh, 
even if we assume uh, even if we assume that Netflix is dominant in the market, dominance is not illegal per se under the act. It is appreciable effects of the of that dominance and abuse of those dominance which is prohibited under the act. And further, we establish that uh, the conduct by Netflix or the activities by Netflix are not uh, are not in abuse of dominance. Uh, activities, uh, activities by Netflix, like agreement with parties, divert cutting its prices, are all business strategy because it was facing a financial instability on its part, and in order to come up uh, to uh, uh, to become stable and keep par with the competitors, it came up with these agreements. Furthermore. There were uh, there were substitutes and competitors available to Netflix, as stated in the fact sheet. There were uh, there were six uh, new entries into the market in the in the same market, which gained popularity quickly. Also, Diamond uh, did not only uh, come into an agreement with Netflix, but also came into an agreement uh, with Big Show for its movie. Furthermore, uh, out of these six entities, two are international entities, uh, which which promotes the competition in the market. Uh, furthermore, sir, Playflix, uh, the user base of Playflix was stagnant. Uh, review uh, revenue and market share were, uh, were on decline, as stated in paragraph number 18 of the proposition. Thus, uh, throughout, uh, uh, we can't say throughout, Playflix has been dominant in the, in the present market. There have been fluctuations, and this is a sign of healthy competition because other entities uh, who are the competitors to Playflix have also taken over. Moving ahead, activities undertaken by Playflix uh, have been uh, in, uh, in order to protect uh, protect its commercial interest. It is also uh, it is again also protecting. Uh, it is also uh, promoting innovation and internal competition, which is necessary, uh, which is necessary for the flourishment of the economy. Again, going by an example, so when uh, Geo came into the market, it uh, it uh, brought itself with in, uh, it itself. With uh, some innovative technologies and innovative strategies, uh, in order to compete, in order to compete with Geo, Airtel, and other telecom uh, telecom sectors, came up with new strategies. This uh, uh, this promoted internal competition. So that's just because some internal strategies or uh, some business strategies are being uh, placed uh, in the market, we can't say that it is abuse of dominance or the do abuse of dominant position in the market. So traditionally, Madam Council. Yes, two industries, two sectors of industries have been a major problem for competition commissions around the world. One is the telecommunication sector. You must have known in the United States, Ma Bell was broken into baby bells and all the baby bells reunited to form the at and right? That is one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is the movie industry. You know, that again, there is a lot of entry barriers, okay? But why is it both of you have ganged up again? So that is why there is a problem, you know? It's, it's not that, you know, individually, both, both of you may be quite acceptable, but collectively, there is an abuse of dominance and it is uh, costing, not the consumer, as my learned president has been pointing out, but the intermediate chapters in the industry. What's your answer to that? Yes, sir. Answering your question in two parts, sir. First, uh, the sectors you mentioned, telecom sector and the movie producing sector, these two sectors have a very symbiotic relationship in nature. When these two sectors are providing services, it benefits both of it benefits both of the parties as stated by CCI in its study on telecom sector. Moving ahead, sir, uh, uh, these the problem uh, the problem which you refer arises when appreciable effects or when some wrong effects are being uh, are being uh, are being done on the consumers on the uh, on the competitors or any other stakeholder in the market. But in the present case, so we established that there is a symbiotic relationship between both the sectors, which is benefiting both the sectors and the stakeholders as well, the competitors and the consumers. Number two, we established that there is no anti-competitive effects or negative effects in the market. Thus, the problem is eliminated. Oh, you. Uh, also, sir, referring to the HHI index again, referring to the HHI index again, uh, the market share 
first, uh, the market share is one of the several factors that we take into account to prove the dominant position. Here, the market share, uh, uh, the uh, the HDI index, the points have not crossed twenty five. Uh, have not crossed twenty five hundred. Even if there is slight change in the market, even if there is slight change in the points mentioned in HDI index. EU guidelines uh, uh, on, uh, symbo on EU symposium says that even if there is a slight uh, uh, fluctuation, uh, fluctuation in the points of HHI index, it does not mean that the entity is high, uh, then the market is highly concentrated or uh, the entity is in a dominant position. It is needed that the threshold should be crossed. If the panel does not have any further questions, the council would like to move on to the panel. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. Because you're pretty close to the end of your allotted time. Please do that. Yeah. Therefore, in the light of the issues raised, arguments advanced, authorities cited, it is humbly prayed before this honorable commission to adjust and declare that number one, acquisition of set pass by Playfix is legally valid. Number two, the agreement between Diode and Playfix is not uh, anti competitive in nature under Section 3, Subsection 4 of the Act. Number three, the collaborative agreement between, uh, between Playfix and Partel is not anti competitive in nature under Section 3, Subsection 4 of the Act. And lastly, Playfix has not abused its dominance in the market under Section 4 of the Competition Act. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Council. It was not finished. Even before the timer could alert us. Thank you very much. And it was an we appreciate meeting. your participation. The council seeks permission to approach the for the purpose. Much obliged. The rebuttal is only going to be in respect of what was argued, right? Indeed. The rebuttals are three to Firstly, we have not received any clarification on the complementary overlap under Rule 5A, and it is pertinent to know that under Rule 5A, the uh, it is the word used in its end, which means that neither it should be vertical, horizontal, or complementary. Where my learned counsel has very smartly skipped the complementary overlap. Second, we need clarification with respect to what was their intention to acquire SecPass. When it was the most efficient security system providing to the market, therefore they have the, they had an intention of restricting innovation in the market. Thirdly, logic and the most important one with respect to the ex, uh, exploitation of the small production houses in the market, they are imposing unfair pricing policy against the low budget movies as provided under paragraph number 18, 28, and 29 of the case study and forcing them to stream their upcoming 10 content at the 10% at the less price of the cost of production launch. Yelach is pertinent to understand that Playflix is abusing its dominant position by delaying negotiation with small production houses, which shows that Playflix is intending to monopolize the market, acting as the price maker instead of being price taker by giving only two options to the small production houses either to agree with the exclusive agreement or to agree with uh, to agree with them on the below cost of production uh, of the of their of their content for the logic as the major relevance is on the hhi uh, hhi index uh, code value kindly kindly submit this thing go ahead go ahead your logic as far as the HHI calculation that is squaring the market share is concerned, then that of Playflix has doubled. And in the case of PDR, your logic relying on the same, the market market is considered as concentrated. Market is considered concentrated above two thousand logic. Here, uh, market concentration of Playflix has increased from seven hundred to fifteen hundred consequently. Therefore, it is irrelevant to consider the same. Image. Much of life. Thank you very much, Paul. One oh. question. Maybe what about the international uh, cross border acquisition and mergers? What, what is the position in the competition? Trans border acquisition and mergers. The council is unaware. Unaware. Fair enough. We have to share that. You will always take an adjournment to do that. Sekpas is a global only SPI <laughs> is registered in, only SPI is registered in uh, ELSA. SPI, but 
Techpass is uh, it's a global company, so subsidized. Indeed, Alchipa, to add on to the same, it yeah. is the only on subsidiary of Techpass. Uh, what is the point? Yeah. Not to restrict to what they raise, three issues. Yes. That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. Please go on to the question. Uh, number one, uh, as uh, asked by our known houses, what was the intention? What was the uh, relevant intention behind uh, acquiring Sekpas? Uh, as already stated by me, sir, uh, that uh, only uh, though, uh, as stated also in paragraph number twenty, a lot of people were watching the content of Play Click, but uh, not only not even half of them were playing uh, pay, uh, were paying for it. This obviously was uh, making Play Fix go into losses. Thus, this was a this was not only a significant problem for Play Fix, but all the competitors present in the market. Thus, it was important to resolve this competition, and the tool which was offered by Play Fix was very efficient. Was very efficient. Thus, it had to acquire the tool play, uh, offered by Play Fix. Number two. Uh, coming on to the complementary overlap, uh, so taking the example uh, as uh, as uh, has been given by CCI, the in cartridges and printers, it is not necessary to combine a few services and products. Uh, uh, because uh, in order to show complementary overlap, in the present case, so there are other competitors of Playfix which are operating without the tools of uh, without the tools of Sekpas and are doing fairly uh, and are doing fairly better, even better, uh, even better in the between years than Playfix itself. Thus, uh, thus the uh, complementary overlap part is ruled out. Furthermore, sir, we contend that uh, the, uh, the learned councils have also not uh, shown and proved the vertical and horizontal overlaps present uh, in the uh, present in the uh, present case, and they have stayed the same. The council is done. With the right. Good council, all of you start to have time limit in a very meticulous way without uh, too much of uh, reminders from us. And I really wish that you uh, should be disciplined when you become real lawyers. Well. Good. Well very well done. Yeah, yeah, fine.